Hi, my name is Jason. Welcome to week four. Wow. At the end of this week, we're going to be halfway done. I know week two was especially tough, and I know this last week wasn't super easy. If you're looking in the student text, week four can also seem very intimidating, but I want you to know that we are only going to be reviewing a few of the topics out of this week's topic, which is thermodynamic cycles. Really what we want to do is we want to just bring the major processes that we looked at together into a cycle. We want to talk about an isenthalpic process. We want to talk about an isentropic process. We want to consider a temperature entropy diagram for a Carnot engine cycle and for a Rankine steam cycle. While the chapter in your text is pages 75 through 91, pay attention to the module 4 page. On those module pages, I'm putting down exactly what I want you to get out of that material. Another way of saying that is this is more what I'm going to test you on, more what you're going to be evaluated to. Because I, I understand, and thank you for those that gave the feedback, the text is a little overwhelming. I hope what I'm doing is focusing you better on the specific ideas. So while we are going to do thermal processes this week, we're also going to do a great deal of review. I'm going to work through some problems from your last quiz, uh, especially the weak areas where uh, I saw a lot of people struggling. I gave a lot of thought to what your evaluation this week was going to be. Uh, going into this, I had an idea that it would be I only wanted to do a quiz every other week and do something different like the that discussion post, right? The, the poultry problem, uh, some type of discussion, something a little more interactive. But because of what I've seen on the quizzes, I'm going to provide some more example problems. And the quiz for this week that will be due on Sunday at midnight will primarily be review. In fact, some of the questions are going to be really, I won't say exactly the same, but really similar. Because I want you to understand this stuff. I want you to understand what these processes are. I want you to be able to use your steam, your steam tables effectively. I want you to be able to chart out a process on a Mollier diagram, on a temperature entropy diagram. So ultimately, I think we just need another week of looking at that. For a bunch of you that are doing really well, this may feel like a slow down, take your foot off the gas. Please don't. C keep reviewing the material. There's a bunch of pages in this uh, chapter that we're not going to cover. Uh, I'm not ever going to test you on it, but it's interesting. Look at the heaters, the reheaters. Look at the uh, feed water heaters, how all of that complicates a steam cycle. So don't be afraid to read ahead. Don't be afraid to go over material that I'm saying, yeah, I'm not going to exactly test you on that. Work through some of these complicated problems. So we're not going to be doing a lot of uh, work calculations and, you know, the whole cycle calculations. I think that's beyond the scope of this class. But you do need to be able to do a process. You need to be able to identify, hey, here's a point in the steam tables. Here's a point on a Mollier diagram. Here's a spot on a temperature entropy chart. And because of this component, this is what it's doing, or this is what it's doing. You need to be able to do that. Part of working through the examples, or I guess they will be examples. They were the problems from the quiz. Then, then I'm going to work through them this week and show you some of where people were uh, having problems with them. That will be an assignment, just like this last week, where just saying, hey, I did this, I looked at this, done, uh, will get you the credit for the assignment. All right. I know that you may feel like, well, that just pads my score. You know? Yep, I'm okay with that. Your grade will still show your level of effort based on the evaluations, based on the quizzes, based on your level of effort on the discussions. So I'm okay with throwing some free points out there on these uh, assignments. Because once again, 
I'm more invested in you learning about this than just, did you read this and here's your test, good luck. Which if you're not watching all the videos, you're not, and you're not following along the practice problems, that may be what this feels like. Pay attention to the Module 4 page. Those are the specific things we're going to cover. Those are the things I expect you to get out of this. We're going to spend some time reviewing this week. You're going to have an assignment to review some practice problems, and you're going to have another quiz, which will cover pretty much the same as last week, plus a couple of new topics from this week, but it's not going to be overwhelmingly all new thermal process stuff. Let's kick things off talking about uh, a real quick overview of a Carnot cycle, and more specifically, a Stirling engine, which is a great example of a Carnot cycle, sort of. So a, a Stirling engine, like this one here, uh, simply has a volume where air can absorb heat from one surface, that's the bottom, right? This is where you put it on a cup of coffee or something and it absorbs heat, which expands the air inside, and that air moves up to a heat sink up here, which rejects the heat to the atmosphere, right? And then it goes through a, a compression process and moves the power piston up, and then that process just keeps going and going. So to show you what that looks like real quick, that big disc inside here is just a loose fitting, it's not really a tight fitting piston, it's just a loose fitting displacer that allows airflow around it. And so this air, uh, as it heats up, starts to, I may need to give it a, a nudge here, There we go. As that bottom uh, plate absorbs that heat, that hot air on the bottom expands to the top, moves this power piston up, and this top plate rejects that heat. So it's absorbing from the bottom, rejecting on the top, and then that air just keeps moving uh, around that displacer piston down there. And so that's a Stirling engine. I hope that's even in focus. And all it's operating on is a temperature difference between the bottom plate, the heat absorbing plate, and the top plate, the re heat rejection plate. And so this is a very, very simple Carnot engine example. And you'll see in your text uh, where we have isothermal expansion uh, and then a, the isothermal compression. So the gas just keeps gaining heat, moving, rejecting heat, moving, gaining heat, and that's a simple Carnot engine cycle. And you can see as this bottom plate absorbs the heat from this hot water, uh, it's moving faster a little bit uh, as that temperature difference gets larger. The more heat this bottom plate absorbs, the larger the temperature difference between the two, and the faster the engine moves. So if you're looking that up on the, I'll include the Wikipedia li uh, link for a Stirling engine. If you're looking it up on there, it, there's a couple different types, and this is an example of a beta Stirling engine. So once again, we're going to do a lot of review this week. Uh, if you are keeping up, don't let your foot come off the gas pedal. There's no harm in reading some of those uh, work problems. For those of you that are going to go on and be operators, or go through the operator portion of the course, I should say, work through some of those problems because these are in the gen these are the start of the generic fundamentals for the operator courses 
And we are going to cover them in advanced thermo. And I think you go on to, to do advanced thermo with me if you're going to be an operator. And uh, of course, for those that are going to be RP techs or IC tech, INC techs, uh, this, we're going to keep it. I may not feel like it's intro level, but it is. Uh, and we're just going to continue to focus mostly on the conceptual stuff. I will guide you as best I can for what I need you to know to pass your final. All right. So for those that have been asking for a Zoom, uh, yeah, I, I'm still considering trying. The timing of that really sucks, though. Uh, you're all busy. I'm busy. I'm working three jobs. I'm two jobs and running a business. It's trying to find time that I know works for everybody. And I know a lot of you are working nights, taking multiple courses. You got, I don't want to conflict with other Zoom stuff. So I, I'm i going to try and keep it to the uh, videos, the focused videos as much as possible. But I'll work through the practice problems. I got a lot of great feedback on that. Uh, apparently you really liked seeing that. So you could follow it at your own pace. I'll keep doing that. And if you do come across something, use that discussion post, the uh, questions for the professor. Take a look. I, I'm, I look at it every day. I'll answer your questions. And that helps me know where you're struggling. I'd rather see it there than on the quiz. All right. Have a good week. I don't know why I waved. Thank mm -hmm. you.